again for your patience. I am joined today by Peter Leary, Kurt Erskine, and David Estes, acting U.S. attorneys for the Middle, Northern, and Southern Districts of Georgia. And we're here today to announce that the U.S. Department of Justice is launching a statewide civil investigation into prisons of Georgia. This investigation will be comprehensive, but will focus on harm to prisoners resulting from prisoner on prisoner violence. We are also investigating sexual abuse of gay, lesbian, and transgender prisoners by prisoners and staff. We are conducting this investigation pursuant to the Civil Rights of Institutionalized Persons Act. This federal law authorizes the Department of Justice to investigate state prisons to determine whether incarcerated people are subject to a pattern or practice of constitutional violations. Our investigations have been successful at identifying not only whether systemic constitutional violations are occurring, but also the root causes of any such violations so that those causes can be fixed and the violations can stop. Our country was founded on high ideals. Under the Eighth Amendment of our Constitution, those who have been convicted of crimes and sentenced to serve time in prisons must never be subjected to cruel and unusual punishments. We must ensure the inherent human dignity and worth of everyone, including people who are incarcerated. In 1980, when President Jimmy Carter signed the Civil Rights of Institutionalized Persons Act into law, he said, to our national shame, there are still instances of grave mistreatment of the very people who need our special concern most because their confinement makes them so vulnerable. That remains true today. While this critical federal civil rights law has led to some progress, the urgent need for our work continues. Today, over 2 million people reside in our nation's prisons and jails, and people of color are disproportionately represented among them. For example, in Georgia, the percentage of incarcerated people who are Black is nearly twice the percentage of Black residents in the state of Georgia overall. According to data from the Georgia Department of Corrections, the state's prisoner population is 61% Black, that they make up about 32% of the population. The Justice Department is committed to seeking to address the devastating effects of prison staff shortages, inadequate policies and training, and the lack of accountability. Understaffing in correctional facilities is a particularly acute problem. It can lead to inadequate supervision and violence. It can also prevent people from being able to access necessary medical and mental health care. Without adequate staff supervision and mental health care, there is an increased likelihood that people experiencing mental health issues may harm themselves or even commit suicide. The risk of self-harm and suicide is compounded when people are locked down and isolated in solitary confinement without ongoing human interaction and without adequate policies, training and staff accountability, people in prisons and jails are also at risk of abuse from staff sexual misconduct and use of excessive force. The investigation of Georgia prisons that we are announcing today will continue this important work to protect the rights of incarcerated people. Under the Eighth Amendment, prison officials have a constitutional obligation to ensure reasonable safety for individuals under their supervision. No prisoner's sentence should include violence at the hands of other prisoners while behind bars. Our investigation will examine whether the state of Georgia adequately protects prisoners held at the close and medium security levels from physical harm at the hands of other prisoners as required by the Eighth Amendment. Based on an extensive review of publicly available information and information gathered from stakeholders, we find significant justification to open this investigation now.
For example, in 2020, at least 26 people died in Georgia prisons by confirmed or suspected homicide. There have been a reported 18 homicides so far in 2021. Reports of countless other violence assaults, including stabbings and beatings, also have emerged from Georgia prisons. Concerned citizens, family members, and civil rights organizations, as well as photographs and videos leaked to social media and through other channels, have highlighted widespread contraband weapons and open gang activity in the prisons. A major riot occurred in one large close security Georgia prison last year, and disturbances reportedly have occurred in other prisons as well. Extreme staffing shortages and high turnover among corrections officers are persistent problems in Georgia. We also will continue the work of our existing investigation into whether the state of Georgia adequately protects lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, and intersex or LGBTI prisoners from sexual abuse by other prisoners and by staff. I'm pleased to announce that a team of career civil attorneys from the special litigation section of the Civil Rights Division will be joined by career lawyers in all three U.S. attorney's offices in Georgia represented here today in conducting the investigation. This investigation will be independent, thorough, and fair. We have not made and will not make any conclusions until our investigation is complete. If our investigation reveals reasonable cause to believe there is a systemic constitutional violation, we will provide written notice to the state of Georgia of the violation or violations, along with the supporting facts and the minimal remedial measures. We will seek to work cooperatively with the state to establish solutions to any problems our investigation uncovers. We are committed to confronting unlawful and unconstitutional uh, issues inside our prisons across the country. And I'd like to highlight just a few examples of how our cases are seeking to address systemic deficiencies leading to harm to human life, safety, and bodily integrity in prisons and jails. Our ongoing litigation of conditions in Alabama men's prisons seeks to address the prevalence of prisoner on prisoner violence and staff use of excessive force. Our findings report in that case highlighted how understaffing creates an unreasonable risk of harm. We are also focusing on harm from prolonged solitary confinement in the enforcement of our consent decrees in Hampton Roads, Virginia, as well as through our investigations of the Massachusetts Department of Corrections, the Alameda County Jail, and the San Luis Obispo County Jail. Our Alameda County Jail investigation also examines how a lack of community mental health services can lead to unnecessary cycling of individuals through carceral and residential mental health settings and exacerbate problems with care in the jail. And finally, our recent consent decree regarding the, Edna, regarding the Edna Mann Correctional Facility for Women requires the state of New Jersey to implement policy, training, accountability, and transparency measures to ensure that women confined there are protected from staff sexual abuse. Confronting unconstitutional, unlawful, and inhumane prison conditions is a top priority for the Civil Rights Division of the Justice Department. As Nelson Mandela said, no one truly knows a nation until one has been inside its jails. A nation should not be judged by how it treats its highest citizens, but its lowest ones. Thank you. I wanna now turn the floor over to acting U.S. Attorney Leary, who will now offer remarks. Thank you, AAG Clark, and good morning to everyone. My name is Peter Leary, and I'm the acting U.S. Attorney for the Middle District of Georgia. The Middle District of Georgia encompasses 70 of Georgia's 159 counties and covers more than 25,000 square miles. And as it relates to this investigation, the Middle District of Georgia is home to 15 
of the 35 close and medium security GDOC prisons. Um, in addition, when formerly incarcerated individuals are released from the Georgia Department of Corrections custody, they often reintegrate into our middle Georgia community. The U.S. Attorney's Office is charged with protecting the safety and security of all members of our community, which is why we work to prosecute individuals such as violent repeat offenders who seek to wreak havoc in our community. But when violence carries over into a prison setting and endangers the lives of inmates and staff members and other corrections personnel, the U.S. Attorney's Office maintains an interest. Our criminal justice system must allow wrongdoers to serve their sentences in a safe and civilized environment. In fact, that's a constitutional guarantee. Prison conditions that enable inmates to engage in dangerous or deadly activity uh, constitute an injustice. And as the Reverend Martin Luther King Jr. famously observed, injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. We work closely on a daily basis with our Georgia state law enforcement and corrections officer partners. And those men and women are indispensable to our united goal of achieving a safer Georgia. So we look forward to working under the leadership of the Department of Civil Rights Division with our colleagues in the Northern and Southern uh, US Attorney's Offices, as well as collaborating with our Georgia State partners to address our mutual concern for the safety of individuals in the correction system throughout the state of Georgia. Uh, next, you will hear from U.S. Attorney uh, Kurt Erskine, who's the acting U.S. Attorney in the Northern District. Thank you, Peter. Good morning, I'm Kurt Erskine. I'm the assistant, I'm the acting United States Attorney for the Northern District of Georgia. The members of my office work tirelessly each day to ensure the safety of the citizens of the Northern District of Georgia. One of the main priorities of my office has been to protect the rights of the most vulnerable citizens. Individuals sentenced to prison in Depart Georgia Department of Correction facilities deserve to be treated humanely while serving their sentences. No prison term should become, no prison term should include becoming the target of violence while behind bars. So today we join our colleagues from the Southern and Middle Districts of Georgia, as well as our colleagues in the department's Civil Rights Division. Special Litigation Section in announcing the expansion of our CRIPA investigation into the Georgia Department of Corrections. Historically, the United States Attorney's Office for the Northern District of Georgia has played an, an important role in civil rights enforcement in Georgia. We are fortunate to have dedicated career prosecutors who focus their work on federal civil rights enforcement. In 2016, we reaffirmed our commitment to civil rights enforcement by creating a civil rights unit. And since that time, we have handled hundreds of civil rights cases that have impacted our district. One of our main priorities of our civil rights unit is to protect the rights of those who are most vulnerable, including those who are incarcerated inside of our state prisons. And consistent with this priority, I'm dedicating the resources of my office to partner with my federal colleagues to ensure that state prisons are safe and compliant with federal law. Like Assistant Attorney General Clark, I am confident this investigation will be independent and thorough and fair. My office looks forward to working cooperatively with the Georgia Department of Corrections to ensure the safety of all individuals inside its prisons. Thank you. Now I'll turn it over to Acting United States Attorney David Estes. Good morning. I'm David Estes, the acting United States Attorney for the Southern District of Georgia. There are 15 state correctional facilities that house medium and close security prisoners within the 43 counties of the Southern District of Georgia. Our office is dedicated to working with our law enforcement partners to investigate and prevent violent crimes, including when they occur <clears throat> in Georgia prisons. Violent assault is not a legal or morally acceptable part of a lawful prison sentence. The investigation discussed today is the latest example of our office's commitment to stamping out violence in our district, no matter where it is found and no matter who the victim is. We look forward to working with the state of Georgia, the Georgia Department of Corrections, the Civil Rights Division of the Department of Justice, and our counterparts in the U.S. Attorney's Offices for the Northern and Middle Districts of Georgia. Further, our shared mission to keep correctional facilities safe and for the sake of our community. 
prisoners housed there and the dedicated staff who work there. Now I'll turn it back over to Assistant Attorney General Clark. We will now take a couple of questions. If you have a question, please use the raise your hand function. If you would like to ask a question, please use the raise your hand function. We will pause for a second. 